Hello, hello. We are currently driving from Reykjavik to Selfoss and this is a good opportunity to have a little chat with Tor about what's going to happen out there on the Sundnuka crater row right now. So, the issue is we had a little eruption on April 1st, but it only lasted a few hours. And then there was earthquake swarms spreading out from there. And uh, now it seems to inflate again after the eruption, so a new magma might be coming in and filling up the reservoir system again. Tor, what's your take on things? How, how, how do you see the situation and what do you think is going to happen now in the foreseeable future? Well, maybe we'll start with the beginning of these things. Um, Sorry, uh, technically we're not so professional today, but we'll, we'll, we'll manage. Go on. <laughs> the, uh, uh, what we had on the 1st of April was that we had an onset of a seismic swarm. Yeah. And then roughly 15 minutes later, we had uh, uh, subsidence starting at Svartzing. So the, the onset of, of seismic activity precedes the uh, subsidence of, of, of Antwartinki, which suggests that it also precedes the movement of magma. Okay. Now, and we, this is quite an intense seismic swarm, uh, uh, well, it intensified rapidly over the next few hours, and then it continued for days afterwards. Right. And, and it spread both northwards along the Sun Nucleus. Lineament and also southward along the Simpson Bugle Lineament underneath Trentavik. And uh, uh, it went much further north than it had done in previous situations. Uh, it actually uh, uh, went almost to the place what we call Kuwagerdi. So it actually, it, it not only did it go north, it actually turned to the northeast. Right. And uh, and from there it actually and took a 90 degree turn towards Krizovic. That's what I saw, that's right. That's and then the, the, very the, the, the southern one went south to Grindavik and then that took about a 75 degree turn towards Reykjanes. And wow. the, the very intense seismic activity out there. And the interesting thing is that on the, the, the far end of the, of the system where, where the seismicity was, we still have seismicity, seismicity ongoing. Right. So uh, the way I see it is that well, another kind of facts, or, or, or not necessarily facts, but uh, numbers that we have in terms of what happened on the 1st of April. So, the uh, prior to 1st of April, we had accumulated between 29, uh, 26 and 29 million cubic meters of magma into uh -huh. the shallow magma chamber of, of Svartsinki. Uh, the subsidence that took place following the event on 1st of April, Indicates that there was about 30 million cubic meters taken out of 30, 30 million. Okay. Right? Now, the length of the, the seismic swarm was well over 20, it's almost 25 kilometers. And if you, and, and it was largely confined to a belt that is about 2 kilometers high, right. between 5 and, and 3 kilometers depth in the crust. And if you interpret that being generated by magma being forced into the into the crust and as, as a dike and, and, and propagating laterally uh, uh, to create all this seismicity, yeah. you know, then you have between 20 and 25 kilometer long dike, Whoa. which is uh, uh, according to to uh, uh, the expert at the Met Office, one meter thick and uh, two kilometer high. Well. Everyone can do those calculations. Yes. You end up with a volume anywhere between sort of 50 and well over 100 million cubic meters. There's a little discrepancy there. So, yes, you don't have enough magma train out of the shallow magma uh, to fill the storage the zone system, to, fi yeah. to fill the, the, the volume that is created by the seismic activity. Oh dear. Or the, supposedly the time. Yes. So, we have a, a bit of a volume discrepancy there. So I think actually what happened is that yes, we had an unusual seismic event mm -hmm. and, and, and we had an earthquake sort of propagated both north and south and with associated uh, uh, rifting and, 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 and opening up of fractures and things like that. And then magma came into that and filled it partially and only managed to get to the surface in the 
location. That's what I think as well, that uh, well, there's a lot of activity, of course, tectonic activity, but not filled it, but only in part. There's other kind of breakage zones down there, and uh, then, I mean, we know that the Krizovic area, the geothermal area is expanding, uh, has been expanding over the last few years, but uh, I, I don't see that the seismicity there indicates that there's magma underneath it. I think that would be... Well, we, we, we really don't know that. There could, there could be magma underneath it. But, but not, it not fresh magma that moved there in the last event. No, 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 no. It's not, not moving last year. It's no. something that has accumulated and, and maybe the seismic event will open a path for the magma to Yeah, that's a possibility. That's a possibility. I, sh I, I see that, but I don't think the magma is moving from Svartsenki to the north and then taking this turn going down to Krizovic again and then deciding to erupt after uh, traveling for no, what is it 25 or even more kilometers laterally come on no no but then, but then again uh, the explanation for the laterally the, the, the one the 90 degree turn earthquake is that it's a consequence of stress building that's right and that there's maybe even pre-existing fractures and things like that so but this is a, a 90 degree angle is a is a is a fracture problem it's not magma doing this but the, the other thing is is that the seismicity began before the the, the, the subsidence which is basically telling me you know, the way I interpret that is that you already start to break the crust you already start to open the fractures and as you open up the fractures the magma also fills in yeah but now you don't have enough volume of magma to fit oh, that's fine. all of yeah. the voids basically created but but it's created anyway because it's that's building. right, exactly. It's it's about uh, creating cracks. And, yeah. yeah. So and uh, magma moves at uh, you know you know how, how how fast magma moves while cracks propagate actually at lightning speed. So uh, they will always be faster well, than the magma. That, uh, they, yes, they do. Uh, well, that, that's that's a theoretical assumption that they do. But there's all we, don't forget there's all kinds of fluid down in that crust. The crust is full of fluid. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have a problem that there's gas filling some of these. Well, there doesn't have to be gas, it could be fluid, and fluid could, could uh, 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 also be going into these cracks and helping them to uh, uh, fail and, and, and help to create some of the seismicity. Yeah, sorry, when I say gas, then what I mean is that it's either in a liquid or in gaseous form. Uh, a fluid is, 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 uh, is, can be either, so... Yeah, yeah it's a super critical state. Yes. Like, like, you know, and how do we know this fluid down there? We have metamorphism. Yes. And, and, and if you have metamorphism, if you have metamorphism,